In the heart of Yorkshire, our health service is hard at work. Emergency department, Barnsley Hospital. Okay. Just relax, mate. Oh. A dedicated team. Stop making me laugh. <laughs> working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Look forward for me. Trainee coming through. <laughs> Ready for anything. I think I've just about got it cracked, this job. Oh. And everything. Everybody clear? Any pain at all? No. Still alive, still alive. Well, you're stuck with me now. Wow. Hello. I'm terrible. Lucky you're well. <laughs> Facing life. We're back from the moon. And death. <laughs> Trauma. Keep going, sweetheart. And tears. <laughs> I know. Supporting each other through the toughest shifts. God help me today. I'm not coming on <laughs> and it's lovely and warm. Is, it? <laughs> is this cut then? Is it like this big or is it like this big? Buckingham Palace one day, Barnsley Hospital next. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's like champagne. <laughs> this is Barnsley Casualty 24 7. God bless the NHS. <laughs> On shift tonight, Sister Rachel. Busy, lots of problems, but we'll get on top of it. It's just a bit hectic at the moment. Nurse Jessica. We know they're in a lot of pain. You're minimising a risk of infection also, which is a huge issue with burns. It's raw skin. And physician associate Wayne. We're aiming to get your heart rate up to about 40 beats a minute. Yeah. And once we've got it to about 40 beats, we'll be happy. So, get ready to share a shift. Lots of drugs for this poor man. With the team at Barnsley Casualty. Quite a good one, isn't it? I feel better. It's the start of yet another gruelling day for the team at Barnsley's Accident and Emergency Department. Will you do a transfer from Reese's for me, please? Thank you. Sister Rachel is in charge. All right. Helped by Sister Jane. CDs are done everywhere. I think SOPs are done anywhere. I've just not had time to run around and check because I've been sorting everything else out. Adding to today's pressure is a new surge of patients arriving with COVID. We do have one bed, but now he's positive. I haven't got a side room because my side room's got another lady on CDU who's undergoing a mental health assessment who's currently detained on a 5-2. And in recess, Consultant Chris Young has been called to help treat the latest patient who's tested positive. Should be day 10 of symptoms, Steve. It's all fine on Friday. The issue is, I can't take a, a decent breath in. Yeah, yeah. So I'm bubbling and gargling. Yeah. Just a few weeks after staff were able to remove their masks, a nationwide spike in COVID cases is causing chaos in the department again. If you want to think about it, you want to take your chain off because we'll need to do an x ray. So. We have got 19 cubicles in main department. Every time somebody comes in with coronavirus, we have to isolate them. That's a lot of demand on cubicles. I'm just ringing to see if you're ready to come up to you, please. It's going to be a long and challenging day for Sister Rachel. I like it busy, I just don't like it too busy, because too busy, it just doesn't feel comfortable. You don't feel like you're doing your job very well. But there's not just COVID patients to treat. Just a sting in the yeah, yeah. A man has been rushed in with burns across one side of his body. I did not have a 47 year old Richard is taken straight to Rhesus. Just stand there for me a second. Where's the last one? Is this burnt on this side? Yeah, it's just all down this side. Did you go in your face? No, it's just been on this side. Just on the top of me, like a little What happened? I was trying to get burnt some rubbish on the fire and it went out. I took petrol in my hand because this thing went on the side. Right. What, the petrol oil? Yeah, I was splashing it on my hand. In trying to light the fire with petrol, Richard's clothes set alight. He's in pain, but his wounds also need protection. It's raw skin, and if they start getting infected, then you've got a whole other worry to try and figure out and manage. I'm just going to pop some dressings over. No problem. I'm going to cut your pants off. No, don't have to. No, I'm fine. I'm going to say it looks like it's going to it's the worst on the top half, my trousers on, but they're yeah. all melted. This might sting a little bit, but then it'll feel better. All right. Sorry, we're we'll back. Sorry. Sorry. All right, it's just cold. Yeah. Very cold. We use a specialist burn dressing, which has um, 
sort of a gel that cools you down. Um, basically to try and stop air getting to it because that's what causes you to sting and to try and keep it moisturised. Looks like you've um, hosed yourself down. Yeah, jumped in a pond. You jumped in a pond. <laughs> <laughs> that's dramatic. I did hose myself down with clean water after. Is there any burns anywhere else? Yeah, it's on, on your side. Right on your yeah. arm. Yeah. Yeah. Over his hands, quite mad. Nothing feels swollen or sore in your throat. Right. With his wounds dressed, it's vital the team check for any internal injuries. No worries. Deep breath in there. Are you all right, please? We always worry about the airway, basically. So we can obviously see that the burn, we know that they're in a lot of pain, but generally, obviously, you inhale a lot of smoke, maybe even flames. You, you never know, depending on what's happened. Given the extent of his injuries, Richard could go into shock. Hey, up, darling. We're going to take you around the CDU. We're going to get some cold shower over Just all in. the areas yeah. for half an hour. They need to cool his burns. And a cool shower. Absolutely intolerable. Try and get to 20 minutes, but if not, 30. Yeah. All right. And then after shower. that, we can um, yeah, get ready would. for this, lad. As Richard leaves Rhesus for his shower, <laughs> the next emergency arrives. 64-year-old Jan has a dangerously low heart rate and is at risk of a cardiac arrest. He's immediately hooked up to a monitor. If you do start getting any chest pains, let us know. Paramedic Catherine attended the 999 call. We did an ECG and the rest of the observations, and despite him looking so well, his pulse was about 28, so a massive red flag. Um, obviously, it's, it's way, way too low. His heart rate should be between 70 and 80 beats per minute. It's OK when I don't do anything, but as soon as I start walking, it's a no-go. Jan was asleep when his smartwatch raised the alarm. It woke me up one night. I did an alarm sound and said, what the hell? And then I discovered the heart rate was only like 30. And I thought the thing was faulty. But then it happened again and I said, well, come, you're right. Physician associate Wayne takes charge of Jan's care. We'll get that blood test taken, OK? He has to carry out a series of urgent tests to see why Jan's heart rate is so low. Obviously, the heart feeds blood, oxygen, nutrients to every organ of the body. As the heart starts to slow down, particularly getting down to the kind of rates we're seeing there, you're not feeding your organs properly, um, most significantly your brain, but, but every organ in your, in your body. If Jan's heart is not pumping blood around his organs, they could start to fail, putting his life at risk. There's a spike in COVID cases at Barnsley Casualty. You've got 17 and you've got the lady in four that have got COVID, but they're in there because they need isolating. And sisters Rachel and Jane are having to isolate every patient who tests positive. So, 16 and four, please, yeah. Sometimes you have to do cohort nursing. Hello, love. And that's where you put two patients with the same infection together. It's a bit busy in here at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this room into a little waiting area for you and another lady. Becca, when you come back, I'll have some more swabs, sweetheart, yeah. I'm very sure. You've tested positive for the coronavirus and so is this other lady, so you're just going to keep each other company if that's all right. Let's swab her. Yeah. I'll print her off. 427928. What I'm currently doing now is creating a fit-to-sit area for the patients with coronavirus so they can all sit together. But I'm going to get you a more comfy chair. Is, is that all right? <sighs> That's the plan. In the clinical decisions unit, Richard's being treated for severe burns after trying to set fire to some rubbish with petrol. To minimise the damage to his skin, he needs to take a cold shower for 30 minutes. Helping Richard is care support worker Katie. Yeah, she's proper shaking at the minute. You're not feeling dizzy, are you? All right, 
It'll do its job until you get out, and then you'll uh, you'll know about it again. Yeah, I'll see. Yeah. Some of that dead skin dropped off anyway. You what, love? Some of that dead skin dropped off. Thought you said something else had dropped off then. <laughs> I tried my best to do the job that I'm here to do. I tried to keep my patients happy. They're in hospital and the pool there. Just please don't fall over each hour. No, all right. <laughs> I just want to look after people how I'd want my relatives to be looked after. Nurses have changed over. <laughs> the cold shower has eased the pain. Hey, woman. Oh, oh, oh. It's not half as bad as it was now, I'll be honest. Pain really but unbearable when I got here. Richard's wounds are redressed. Yeah, so I think that's pretty much got it. Oh. it smells lovely, what is it? <laughs> it's just a type of, you know, like um, almost like a vaccine type. All oh, right. And he's prepared for a transfer to the specialist burns unit in Sheffield. Hi, can you put me through to Northern General, please? It'll get transferred to them. They'll monitor for dressing changes, um, development of blisters, see if they need de roofing. Uh, and then if, worst case scenario, and he's any skin grafts, they'll take, take Cobra's care from there, basically. But Richard didn't wait for the ambulance to arrive. He decided to leave and manage his injuries at home. After four weeks of intense pain, his wounds began to heal and he's now fully recovered. <laughs> Today, the department has no free beds, no patient flow, and a surge in COVID cases. Good morning, darling. But volunteer Jane is back from holiday. Morning, dear. Morning, love. You all right, love? I am, love you. Where are we buried up under the strain? So I've been off for a week, and this is what's happened. Broughton chairs. And she's determined to get things ship -shape. I've only been here half an hour. We've got shutters that's broke, chairs that's broke, milkmaid, whatever it is, broke. There's a walking frame down that back corridor and it's not got a rubber end on it. Broke. Well, it shells broke, hasn't it? Have you got your own spanners and tools? I'm sorted. I think I've got it organised now, you know. Tight Bob the Builder. <laughs> Cut that, eh? Ah, oh, what? Who needs Bob? Who needs Bob the Builder when they've got Jane? In recess... Oh, I'm just going to clip this to your ear. I'm just going to take that, that, that prop off your finger. I'm going to use this one instead. <laughs> Jan's been admitted with a dangerously low heart rate and he's at risk of organ failure. The last few weeks, I started feeling so tired and uh, I hadn't enough energy for anything. I couldn't stand up, no nothing. And uh, I got so, so worrying, I couldn't even get up to the stairs to go to bed. For physician associate Wayne, it's a worrying picture. His heart tracing showed that it was in a complete heart block. So ordinarily your heart, the top of your heart, generally controls the rhythm of the whole, the whole heart. Um, with this individual, the top of the heart and the bottom of the heart are not talking to each other uh, and are both going on at their own merry little rate. So our, our role down here is to get you stabilised and comfortable and make sure that you're not in any imminent danger. So we're going to give you a medication to just support your heart a little bit to start with. OK. OK. And we'll gradually increase it until we see your heart rate start to come up. Is it dripping in now? So it's dripping in now. Yeah, oh. that, that's, that's running, running into there. And we're aiming to get your heart rate up to about 40 beats a minute. Yeah. And once we've got it to about 40 beats a minute, we'll be happy. Most people enjoy getting hands-on with patients and, and making a difference there and then. So I certainly find it very satisfying to achieve a result uh, and to be able to see a result uh, while a patient's still here with us in A&E. Well, the nurses will keep checking on it uh, and I'll be back in about sort of 10 or 15 minutes to have a look at you. OK. Thank you. Back in the hub. Morning, darling. Volunteer Jane is catching up with colleagues after her break. All right, Cocker. I got you. Yeah. Tea I went to her before you, but week before that, I would got cold and were happy, so I didn't come in. And my mother had got COVID. And she's on a mission to get rid of the clutter she's discovered on the back corridor. 
Because like, they're, just, they're just blocking our corridor out, out road to X-ray department. I said, it looks like a scrap yard. Honestly, there's just trolleys piled up. She's leaving nothing to chance. Good morning's work, that, isn't it? In the packed waiting room, 77-year-old Avril has arrived with her partner, Robert. They were in the supermarket when a heavy boxed barbecue fell onto the back of her leg, causing a nasty cut. Yeah. I'm coming out and there's somebody behind me got a big barbecue on the trolley and it slid off into the back of the leg. And it didn't get me like a skinner. Oh. Robin, like heck. Nurse Steph examines her injury in cubicle two. Can I take this bandage off and have a look? Yeah. Who put this on for you? I'm on now. Get some I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just want to have a quick look at it. That's the skin. Yeah. I've slid it down. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Avril's wound is in danger of becoming infected. She needs to see a doctor urgently. Are you just going to keep that in place? Are you just going to go and get James, one of our doctors, and he's going to come and have a look at it? <laughs> in the hub. Ha, there's one. Sister Rachel's playing an elaborate game of musical chairs. Look at this. Much better chair, isn't it? She's trying to make her COVID patients as comfortable as possible. There we go. Is that OK? But there's only so many cubicles to go round, and she's running out of space. <laughs> there's no let-up in casualty today. Fans ain't he? Another emergency has arrived. A lorry driver has fallen from the back of his vehicle while out on his rounds. Freak accident, really. Just stepping back, lost my foot in, you know, so... 57-year-old Carl is taken to cubicle 8 to wait for a doctor. As I was getting off the back of the wagon, I fell on my back first, winded myself. And I, as I turned over, to tried to get up, I felt, oh, that doesn't feel right. So I had a look down and thought, oh, it doesn't look right either. You know, I had uh, a little bit of uh, bone sticking out, Maurice. So it's, uh, like I say, I've had better days. Carl's no stranger to A&E. <laughs> As it happens, yeah, just on this wrist here, I've got a scar here and I've got uh, pins through that one from an accident many years ago. So I fell over a, a sewage pipe. So, but not content with that. I've walked away and come back and fell over the same sewage pipe, you know, so made a proper job. Broke in five places, that one, so. They had to uh, harvest bone out of my hip to do that repair. So, uh, so I've got a scar there, scar on my hip, and uh, so yeah, I'm a bit of a clumsy one, really, at times. <laughs> this time, the bone has broken through his skin. Sorry about the blood, but just under here, it's just popping out through the skin, so. Uh, Come to say hello. Carl's wrist is at risk of infection. If we do have an injury where it's called an open fracture, there's a risk that not only our own skin bacteria, but also anything from the outside world can get into the joint space and cause infections. So we take open fractures quite seriously. He needs an urgent X-ray so doctors can assess the damage and begin treatment. Back in cubicle two. Hello, is it Avril? Consultant James Griffiths is examining the deep gash on Avril's leg. Rightio. And what have you done? Somebody's been following me via trolley and the barbecue's fallen off it. Spin off it. Oh, OK. So it was, like, balanced on the top, was it? Yeah, and it's... yeah. Oh, gosh. And... Yeah, and it's caught the back of your leg. Yeah, and there's a like that, you know. Oh, dear. All right. Let's have a look, then. Quite a good one, isn't it? It is. 
Sorry, my love, sorry. Carol's got a nasty, what we call sort of skin tear to her lower leg. It's quite common in older patients who've got very thin, fragile skin that they suffer these nasty wounds um, that you can't then stitch because the skin is too thin. Uh, if they've got areas of skin loss, then we just try and bring it as close together and then dress it and then continually review it for wound healing. Because sometimes these patients go on to need like skin grafts and, and specialist procedures under the plastic surgeons. We might be better getting our nurse practitioners to have a look at this. Because I'm not sure how much of that skin will, will lift up. Um, but we'll give it a soak and get it as close as we can. And then we might just need to dress it and bring you back to, to our clinic to have a look at it in a few days. Avril's wound will need to be closely monitored as her age makes her vulnerable to further complications. As we get older, our immune system's not quite as good. Also, if we have difficulties with our circulation, then that can cause problems with wound healing, particularly in the lower extremities. Um, so yeah, she's at risk and we need to keep a close eye on it. We'll take you down to our nurse practitioners, Avril, and get you patched up. In the hub... Did you say one sugar? Sister Rachel is leading the battle against a new COVID surge. And every little counts. While in recess... Hello, my dear. Hello. My name's Dan, I'm one of the doctors. How are you? Another patient has been rushed in by ambulance. Deep breaths. It soon becomes clear she has COVID. So we were treating her originally for sepsis when she came in, but she came back positive for COVID. And so she uh, obviously then went to her side room to be treated for that. Which means sister Rachel, already struggling for space, is another cubicle down. It's the last thing she needs. Uh, it's a really busy day. Uh, lots of patients attend the department. Um, we're short on staff. Lots of sick patients coming in. But thankfully, one is about to leave. Avril's leg wound has been treated by one of the emergency nurse practitioners. Put flat back, and they've got to go and curl it at top, and they put this, and then they might put stick plastic all the way around it. They've got it uh, back in its position, yeah. So it'll leave a scar, but it'll leave an abscess. I'm too old to worry about that. A scar. That's I've already got plenty. Bandaged up, Avril is allowed home. Her leg is still healing and she's visited weekly by a district nurse. In recess, Jan is being given drugs to increase his dangerously low heart rate. They put me on the monitor and then they discovered that my heart rate was so low that they were a bit flabbergasted I was still sitting here, as I did. So all the nurses came to have a look, there were about eight of them, and they all looked like, in, like they couldn't believe it. He's had blood tests to check his organ function. Results show one in particular is struggling. We have most of your blood tests are back. The sort of blood supply to your body is reduced, so your kidneys are starting to just show that they're a little bit unhappy. Yeah. If Jan's heart rate doesn't respond to the medication, even more of his organs could start to malfunction. It's just volume. The beds are tight. At Barnsley Casualty today, sisters Rachel and Jane are battling an overcrowded department. Made worse, by an influx of COVID patients. Well, I hope your afternoon's better than my morning. My morning was just, you know, when you just get fight, fighting fires, fighting little jobs, you're going to be struggling for beds all afternoon. Someone lucky enough to have a bed in recess is 64-year-old Jan. His heart rate is being monitored by physician associate Wayne. Only so, if it's good. It is good. Oh, it is good. Uh, so your heart rate is responding. I'm happy with that. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we were aiming to get your heart above 40 beats a minute. Your heart's going nearly twice as fast as it was. So, happy days. Initial blood tests showed Jan's kidneys were struggling. They were just not very happy with the fact they weren't getting enough blood. Hence, we've given you this drip of, uh, drip of fluid 
just to help your kidneys out a little bit. Jan has something called a heart block, a condition that's made his heart beat in an abnormally slow rhythm. And we've managed to get hold of the cardiology team and the plan is a pacemaker tomorrow. If he's taken off the medication, his heart rate will plummet further, so he needs an operation. So we have a permanent pacemaker fitted that will then keep your heart going at, a, at the rhythm and uh, at the rate that you want it to be at. The pacemaker's a little box of tricks. It just goes under, usually goes just under your skin, up here, a wire into the heart, and it just ticks away, keeping your, keeping your heart, heart going. So it's a, a little surgical procedure. And how many miles from that? Oh, you'll be fine, you'll be fine for, you'll be fine for years. <laughs> I can't believe it's so quick. You know, it's like ordering from Amazon the next day delivery. Um, so, yeah, next, uh, tomorrow we'll pacemaker and uh, I think in the full anaesthetic. And then hopefully uh, after that I will be all right. He's been actually struggling at home for a couple of days with this. He's called the ambulance at the right time. We've got him stable and comfortable here. There's, uh, there's, there's no reason that he shouldn't, he shouldn't do well. I can't believe how pleasant everybody is here. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> it's amazing. We do our best. It's really uplifting. Well, thank you for that. Yeah. Jan spent the night on the cardiology ward. See you guys. Thanks for all your help. And had a pacemaker fitted the next morning. He says he's never felt better. She's struggling, yeah? Okay, and what are her now? Back in the hub. Plan says, care home has measures in place, the CK is normal, so she can go back home. Sister Rachel is trying to manage a department at capacity. Can I emergency department back, please? I mean, you don't work in A&E because you like a nice, calm environment, but you like it ticking over, but this feels a bit too busy. Oh. Next to arrive is 10-year-old Kobe. He's in paediatrics with a painful dislocated thumb. Advanced paediatric nurse practitioner Anthony is assessing his x-ray. You can see his thumb come up and then obviously it's an angle because this piece should be at the end of that finger. How are you feeling? While Kobe inhales some pain relief, Nurse practitioner Anthony tries to manipulate the thumb back into its socket. Keep breathing. Relax your hand for me. Keep it relaxed. Feels like it's gone back in. Does that feel better? Yeah. <laughs> Kobe knows the drill all too well. Thanks to his dislocated digits, He's a regular visitor to paediatrics. You've done it before, haven't you? Yeah. How many times now? Um, you lost eight. count. Eight. Yeah, it's um, eighth time that he's dislocated his thumb since May, um, and he's done it to four fans. But I think it's his left one that he's done it to more. Sometimes he can put it in at home, but then other times we have to come up here for our doctors to do it. Did you knock it on something, or? I don't know, I just tripped on glass and it just come out. Right. You feel me touching it? You feel that one? Yeah, you don't feel that one. How does it feel? Good. Good? Is that the end of talking or does it feel okay? <laughs> no, no, it feels okay. Right, relax that then. To make sure his thumb's back in the right position, Kobe pays X ray another visit. Kobe, do you want to come in, mate? Yeah. That's good, man. Right then, so, you'll have had a few of these done before, have you? Yeah. Real still, Kobe. Super. We're all finished, Kobe. Well done there, pal. There's a good chance that he has got ligament damage. The more it happens, the more chance he has of long-term problems. Once the ligaments have been stretched, it takes a long time for the ligaments to go back to normal, if ever, in some cases, they don't. That was your first one. While they await the results, Mum Liz recalls some of the eight dislocations he's had in the last year alone. That's your second one, and that's your two parts on. Uh, Nurse practitioner Anthony has the X-ray results of dislocation number nine. Yep, 
that lost back in place. We were dislocated before, I was like at this joint just here. Um, and it's all in a nice straight line. So I was successful. Kobe's thumb is straight for now. But it might not be long before he's back again. Once you've dislocated something once, the ligaments are loose, so it does, it can quite frequently happen. It sounds like he's damaged his tissues around it, um, but because he's still growing, they can't really operate until he starts growing. Right, so it's, yeah, it's back in place. Oh, so it's all back where it should be, um, and it's looking okay. Thank you. All right then, bye bye. 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 Kobe is sent home with a splint. He returned the following week to have a plaster cast fitted. <laughs> Making her rounds of the department. Open sesame. Volunteer Jane is still catching up with everyone after her holiday in the sun. I said, Jane, when do you go away? Uh, June and uh, Oh, I thought it was before then. Hi. I went to Egypt for a week. Uh, but I'm on about trying to get my mum to Cyprus and leaving her there. And then going and collecting her when she's gone. <laughs> Well, you've got how many doses of atrovenin in you It's actually bleeding more now than it was earlier. In radiology, lorry driver Carl is having an x-ray. Is it mainly your wrist that hurts? Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's badly injured his wrist after falling from the back of his lorry. Right, so bring your arm across for me. Off it onto there. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, like that, the action. Okay. Ooh. Oh, no, yeah. I gathered that. <laughs> we made a good job of it. Yes. Definitely. That's fine. We don't need any more, then. Thank you. Take care. Too late for that. <laughs> Judging by the reaction of the radiographer, <laughs> the prognosis doesn't look very good. I think it's broken uh, one or two places. Sure, it'll need resetting, you know. <laughs> That'll be me later. <laughs> Registrar Sarah Foster has his x-ray results. Here we can see the, the bones of the wrist. There's a fracture across this bone with multiple pieces. The key thing about this wrist is it's quite unstable because the normal architecture of the, the joint has been damaged. The wrist looks at a bit of a strange angle and that's because this surface here has shifted downwards towards the elbow because this piece of bone here should be attached down here and all of this should be slightly higher up on the x-ray. So it is probably going to need manipulating potentially in theatre with an operation to fix it. Carl's fractured bone has broken the skin, and that's a big concern. Joints are a sterile part of the body, so they shouldn't have any bacteria in them. They are meant to be lovely sterile spaces protected from that. An infection could significantly prolong his recovery. All right, sweetheart, so it's uh, it, it bus journeys for the foreseeable. It's not just bus journeys that Carl is worried about, it's plane journeys too. He has a family holiday to Disneyland just around the corner. Just hope I'm due to fly to Florida in six weeks. You know, <laughs> taking one on the first uh, proper holiday. I was telling her, you know, the other day, we've got to be very careful now, accidents at school, and, and then I fall off the back of a wagon and break my arm. An operation on his wrist could put Carl out of action for several weeks and put the family holiday in jeopardy. <laughs> In the hub, the battle to get some flow in the department and keep everyone safe from COVID goes on. The doctor wants you to stay in hospital, so you'll be going up to the ward, OK? But in order to do that, we need to do a swab for the coronavirus up each nostril. Is that OK? Yeah. But right now, I'm just making sure that everyone who is needing a bed is ready for the ward. So I'm making sure they've got the COVID swab back, all the paperwork's done, and they're just ready for when the bed's available, which they all are so far, as long as none of them become unwell or get a COVID-positive test, then we're all good to go. As a recently qualified nurse, Beth is one of the newest members of the casualty team. 
These are our POC testing machines, which we do on every admission. So obviously we're not mingling COVID positive patients with COVID negative patients. Thank you. Hello, emergency department, Barnsley Hospital. Despite the pressures of a new COVID spike... Yeah, we've got a cubicle free, so if you want to just come in... ..people needing other emergency treatment keep arriving. 64-year-old Philip's partner called 999 when he started slurring his words. I answered the phone about half past eight. I spoke about two words, which were fine, and then it was just like somebody turned my voice up and then I started slurring my words. Uh, I couldn't speak hardly. Consultant Jane Acty carries out some basic tests. Yeah. Push me away, push me away. Okay. So, slurred speech. Yeah. The main thing that we're going to be a bit worried about is yeah. the stroke. Yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to wish you around for a CT scan now. Without any CG, a heart yeah. trait, and get some blood tests off on you. Yeah. Um, and then once we've got all that information together, we'll make a plan. Okay. okay. I, I wasn't too worried to start with, but as if we're getting more slurred, which it is now. I just thought, uh, have I had a stroke or not? Morning, Philip. Good. Specialist stroke nurses Jane and Pauline arrive to find out more. Have you ever had any uh, strokes before? No. So you've just come in to hear your speech? It's not as clear as okay. normal. Um... Can you just put your mask down for me? Can you smile? So if you looked in the mirror, <clears throat> would you say that your mouth droops at one side or...? My partner said it looked all right this morning. Like normal. It's just, it yeah. does look a bit droopy at one side, but if yeah. that could be normal for yeah. yourself. Yeah. Just give me a smile. Well, big, 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 big smile. Yeah. <laughs> the team needs a definitive diagnosis. So Philip is sent for an urgent CT scan that will show if he's had a stroke or if he's having one right now. Philip's in casualty with a suspected stroke. His only obvious symptom is slurred speech. But it's enough to warrant blood tests and a CT scan. Touch your nose and then touch my finger as fast as you can. Whilst awaiting the results, specialist stroke nurse Pauline conducts a few more tests. Have you had any problems with your swallowing? No, it just feels a bit swollen. It could be a resolving TIA. It's a transchemic attack. It's like a mini stroke, but which resolves itself within 24 hours. Put my tea for fix it in here. And I'm talking better now, so I'm happy. My stomach's not too long now, and I can go home. Marvellous tonic is tea. Fix it out. Dr. Sean Burns has the results of Philip's scan. Nice to meet you, Philip. Yes. But it doesn't provide any clarity, and Dr. Burns remains concerned. I think he's slowing his speech. Well, he's telling me his speech is And I, I can it's hear it. it. It's very, uh, like yeah. it's, not, it's not there. So I think something is going on. Yeah. He delivers the news to Philip. Well, I think you need to come into hospital here for an MRI of your head. Uh, give him here, then. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Any questions? No. <laughs> no, I know it's all a bit shocking. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Philip. Cheers. Uh, he's just a bit concerned that he still thinks I'm slurring his speech occasionally, but he thinks I might have had a very mild mini stroke. Not good, but it's not been a massive one. It might just be a wake up call. Right, so we'll take an aspirin to take. Thank you. Free bed breakfast, sir. I'm going to send the message to the missus and let her know I'm staying in. Philip had an MRI scan, which confirmed he had suffered a mini-stroke. He's now under the care of stroke specialists. Can I also do a swab for the coronavirus? In the hub, the fight against Covid continues. This one's just up each nostril, OK. But the waiting times are starting to come down. 
We're kind of catching up on jobs, but there is still a lot of work going on, a lot of things to do, so it's still busy. We've still got 80 patients in the department at the moment. It just keeps chipping away. Yeah, I don't know how bad it looks from your angle. Back in cubicle eight. Yeah. <laughs> That's even more now they took it off. Lorry driver Carl's bandage has been removed. Lovely. Need a picture of it now, don't we? But it's not just his wrist that he's worried about. I just hope I'm all right for my holiday. <laughs> I, go on a, I get on a flight in uh, seven weeks, so uh, hopefully it'll be done and out of cast and not too many roller coasters, I don't think. <laughs> we'll be all right. Sister Jane arrives with the medication he needs. So I've got an antibiotic for you, a tetanus, and just some fluids to keep dehydrated, OK? If you don't mind, So I'll give you your antibiotic first through here. OK. So you might just feel it going up your arm a little bit. Some people say it feels warm, some people don't feel it at all. As Carl has a compound fracture, meaning his bone has broken through the skin, he's at greater risk of infection. Oh, I forgot there to tell you I'm scared of needles. Oh, yeah. Well, you did very well. I'll get you a little badge to say you've been a brave <laughs> I want a sticker. <laughs> I'll get you one. Basically, you, you need to go to the theatre yeah. um, and have it properly washed out and then set with a plate. The injury needs as much protection as possible until it can be operated on. So Sister Jane applies an antiseptic dressing on the open wound. Um, <sighs> Now, I'm going to pop you this dressing on. It might sting a little bit. Be gentle with me. You might just need to hold the dressing on. Look at all the best jobs, huh? You can rush around like that if you want to. Right, I'm just going to pop this sock on, so just bear with me. Sorry, sweetheart. You all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd let you know if I weren't, don't worry. <laughs> Sorry, darling, that's all right. Okay. <laughs> You've known there, she could have got your finger. Sorry, look. <laughs> You're being very brave. I will get him a brave boy sticker. And finally, a pot to support the wrist. Phase one. But one question remains can he go on his longed for holiday? It'll be fine because once it's plated, they're mended, aren't they? You've not like got to wait for bones to stick together. You know, like sometimes you can put a pot on and you're a good six weeks waiting for the bones to knit together. But when they plate them, they're practically repaired straight away. So it's a bit better. Florida. Mm. Mm. I've been telling little. Well, we only told her the other day. Oh, is it? We booked it back in 2019. Obviously, COVID oh. kicked in 2020, so we had to rearrange it, and COVID kicked in again, so it's rearranged for this year now. Oh, that's nice. Let's get you to Florida, eh? Hi. After spending the night in hospital, Carl's wrist was plated and pinned the next day. A month later, his cast was removed, and he made it to Disneyland. <laughs> We'll get up. Thank you very much. Cheers, bye. In the hub, the pressure is finally easing, and one by one, cubicles are coming free. We've got one coming up shortly, so it's very exciting. Sister Rachel can hand over the department in a better shape than when she came on shift 12 hours ago. When I came in, it was seven hours, 40 minutes to see a doctor. And now we've clawed it back, they've done really well. Now it's four and a half hours. That's progress. It hasn't been easy, but it's all in a day's work for Sister Rachel. You see people in their most desperate time. They come to you because they're scared, they're frightened, something's suddenly gone wrong. There we go. You give people a bit of reassurance, a bit of guidance. A little bit of hard work, you can see straight away how you've helped that person. Today, Sister Rachel and her team have helped around 300 people, all in need of care. Time for some much needed rest before she does it all again tomorrow. Next time on Casualty 24 7. My wagon rolled over this morning. Somehow I managed to stay in the seat. Oh my God. You stop, but then you think, I'm alive. The job that nobody else seems to do. Lost property, somebody's denture, 
So is them one's top, one's bottom? <laughs> didn't like she didn't She didn't know she was pregnant. All that in Barnsley next Monday night at 9. Some of us think of escaping the city, meet the families who go for it, and inspired country life for half the price, brand new Thursday night at 9. Trapped upside down in his car, Damon is in a bad way next to night. Skilled work from the trauma team in Stoke. 999 critical condition in just a moment.